What is it? Well, what? Okay. If we're taught a traditional understanding of what acting is, Troy said it's to do. But actually, let's think about it this way. If you're acting, if we see you act, acting is an invisible art form. If, so if we can see you act, it means you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so we don't want to see you act, right? So it's actually before doing is being, but that's not really what I want to talk about. But acting really comes from Really, it's the oldest thing since time began. The Greeks were doing it, and they called it a what? <laughs> what? Storytelling. Now they did not call it a storytelling. I guess they did, maybe. They did. Fair enough. What? I should have looked up my Greek before I came here. What is it called? It's called a... When they play. put on a play, so it comes from, what does it come from? Playing. It's from a play. It's to play. Where along our journeys as we become adults do we forget that it's really about just that? And so I think, uh, listen, that's all of what, ultimately all of the teachings are really kind of harnessed in not taking things so seriously you got to get over your drama about it please just check it at the door you can put that stuff back on when you leave like getting a greater you know a, a, a scope about your own life and realizing you actually have champagne problems mm -hmm. none of you you guys are all beautiful able-bodied young talented smart people living in including you sean living in you know a really amazing city but you don't see your you know all these amazing boons that are available to you all these amazing gifts you don't see them that way i'm always joking you see them in relation to my latte is it cooked at 140 degrees i'm taking it back you're like yes we gotta get back to the play the play is the thing in all aspects of it, in the work, in your life. Why are we so serious? Your life is pretty good. Why do you go into auditions and get so serious? You lose the connection of why did you want to act, not act, play to begin with. Well, I just said it. You wanted to play. You know, whenever I spend time with my four-year-old niece, it's the greatest example. I was saying this uh, last, I think in last one of the last week's classes, it blew my mind, I was with her the other day, and she, she just got a new bunk bed, and then I, I helped her build a fort, right? <laughs> and when we used magic words, but her magic words to get in and out of the fort always changed, and I couldn't keep up with them. And they were these gigantic <laughs> words, like, I've been having a chip at dong Like, and only she knew it, but I would like, play along with it. But the interesting thing is she talked about the fairies, and I was like, oh. Yes, the fairies are everywhere. <laughs> I mean, well, they are. I mean, like, but no, the fair, like, it, it, all of a sudden, I was like, oh shit. Yes, the the worlds that we that kids have access to, we have access to in play. But because you're an adult, those worlds don't exist. <laughs> now I'm too cool for that. No. The sense of your child is still abundantly alive, except for you become too cool for school, cynical, jaded, bitter. <laughs> Sound familiar? We all suffer from that as adults. And then when you spend time with a child, you see it's all about immersion in the play. That's all she does. And to keep up with her is exhausting. <laughs> I'm like, what? And then it reminds me of, oh, when you do the best work, you're released in play. I just want to say two more things about that. You know, to create is really just to bring into existence. So if you go into auditions and you give yourself the permission in your work to create from that playful spirit, what do you bring? You birth new worlds. And the other thing I was talking about a while ago, not in this class, but I, I, it was interesting. I think, oh, it was when I was in Vancouver. Because I think Vancouver actors are a little bit behind the curve. In the, I think they're still stuck a little bit in the 80s that acting has to be, we have to whip ourselves and flagellate ourselves in pain. And it's like, and I said, you guys, actually the physics disprove that. The actual, you have the access to things that you want in your life comes from the highest vibrational frequency. And that is joy. That's who we are, except for 
the stuff that we tell ourselves, our left brain stuff that we tell ourselves, keep us, it's like a cork, you know, bobbing on the water. Your, your vibrancy wants to cork at the top, but you keep pulling it underwater. But it's interesting, this is a good analogy. You pull it under the water, but what happens? You pull it under the water with the thoughts that you think about yourself and the business and life and your boyfriend and your girlfriend and your parents and your siblings and your money situation and acting and acting class and your agent and your manager. These things do that and they pull your cork under the surface. But what actually happens? The cork can't stay submerged. That's, that is analogous to the spirit of who we are. So it becomes about mindfulness of moving beyond the things that are trying to submerge your cork. And the actual physics of creativity, the things that you're wanting to have happen in your life and in your work come from a, a place of joy. You can't access epiphanies, new insights, awareness, um, uh, moving through to the next level when you're in this of your life. <laughs> It really comes in the breakthrough of joy. When you actually create in joy, I wrote, you have access to all the things that you really want as an artist. Which then leads us right back to the beginning, which is, that's why you wanted to create in the first place. Please, just go watch a child play this week, and it will be like, this is the simplest teaching. My teachings are really not that hard. They're just, I can't make them any simpler. Which is get out of your own way, get back to the basics, get back to the foundation of listening and creating and do it your way and playing and following your instinct and going for something. Go in, all in. You know, kids, I lectured about that also a couple weeks ago. I'm a broken record. What's the name of the guy who did that movie that's coming out? Everybody's saying it's like going to be the movie of the year. Sean, what is it? 12 Years of Slavery. And he's uh, uh, um, Steve McQueen, is that the name? Not Alexander McQueen, because that's the shoemaker, right? Is that who? <laughs> um, so he says, if you're an actor, you gotta go all in, always, otherwise get out. Watch kids, there is no trepidation. When, kid, when my niece was playing, she is all in. She's actually leaving me in the dust. That's how all in she is. And I consider myself an all in kind of guy. So, that's who you are. The cork, think about the cork, that's good, it just came to me. The cork, you're a cork. Just look at, just, if I had one right now, it'd be just, it just, oh, that's what wants to happen. That's it. You get that analogy? Does everybody understand? Yes. Okay.